What's up, future respiratory therapist? I told you last week this was coming. Today we're jumping into the rocks index. Let's dive in. So as I stated in this video, we're talking all about the rocks index. Before we jump into that, do me a favor, head over to respiratorycoach.com, check out the Respiratory Coach Academy, where you can find the TMC and the CSE bootcamp to help you pass those credentialing exams on the first attempt. You'll also find several mini courses, all of it there just to aid you uh, and assist you and make your journey to, to becoming a registered respiratory therapist just a little easier. So go check that out if you will. And now let's talk about the rocks index. So when we say the rocks index, first thing we need to know is, well, what is it? Why, why are we talking about this? Well, the reason we're talking about it is because um, the rocks index is a tool. Eakins actually defines it as such. Uh, chapter 42, page 918 in the 13th edition, it says this right here. A predictive tool that has been developed to help determine whether an HFNC, high flow nasal cannula, vapotherm, OptiFlow, one of those two will be successful in a non-invasive treatment of hypoxemic respiratory failure is the ROX index. So we realize that that's what it is. Now, when you're out there taking care of your patients, the more tools you have to help identify your patients that are, are tolerating therapy well, perhaps getting better, and, and, and moving through the process of, 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 of being uh, you know, out of the ICU and then eventually out of the hospital, or what about those patients who are trending in the unfavorable way? Helping you to identify the more tools you have to identify when a therapy is not working, when a patient is deteriorating. We, we need tools to help us dis, de, de, decipher between progress and regress. Our job is to reduce the escalation of care, and this tool is what we can use during high flow nasal cannula therapy to help predict for us what's coming down the road. Now, as I say predict, it doesn't mean that predictions always come true. Uh, not, 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 uh, regardless of what this ROX index tells you, your patient still may fail um, the high flow nasal cannula therapy and require intubation and mechanical ventilation. This is what it is. Uh, we just know that we have another tool to help us be better in providing for them. The ROX index combines SpO2, FiO2, and respiratory rate. It takes three different patient parameters, combines them all into one single objective number that then we can apply and interpret to say leading towards success, leading towards failure and we can intervene earlier rather than later. Let me show you what that single number is. Now, Egan's again defines um, this right here where it says, research has demonstrated that patients with a ROX index greater than or equal to 4.88 after two, six, and 12 hours of high flow nasal cannula therapy were less likely to be intubated. It goes on to say, in contrast to that, the patients who were more likely to be intubated at those same time periods, 2, 6, and 12 hours, if their ROX index was less than 2.85, 3.47, or 3.85 at those respective times, then they were more likely to, be, to require intubation and the need for mechanical ventilation for the treatment of them. So this is the number you're looking for, greater than or equal to 4.88 when you do this calculation. Now, I know you've been waiting. Let's see what the calculation looks like, right? So here's what it looks like. The ROX index equals your SpO2 divided by your FiO2 and then divide that by your respiratory rate. So it's SpO2 divided by FiO2 divided by respiratory rate. That is the formula. Now, it's also important to note that the SpO2 is represented this as a whole number. So if your patient saturation is 95%, you will use 95 right there. Uh, and then your FiO2 in a decimal form like FiO2 should be represented in. And then your respiratory rate as your whole number in breaths per minute. So that's what the formula looks like. We've got a little practice exercise down here for you. We've got two different patients. Patient one. Uh, has a saturation of 88%, an FiO2 of 40, and a respiratory rate of 32 breaths per minute. Patient two, SpO2 of 100%, FiO2 of 80, 
and respiratory rate of 32 breaths per minute. Now, I like to, to put these up here because this is the value in having objective tools that combine multiple parameters. You see, if I just said patient two has an SPO2 of 100%, patient one has a saturation of 88%, you would, you would be more alarmed by the 88% most likely. Most likely, most people would say, okay, you know, yeah, that's fair. The 88% is going to catch my attention over the 100%. Both of them are breathing 32 breaths a minute, so that doesn't help us decipher anything, right? And so when we look at that, we have to say, okay, I see how this works. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna plug some numbers in and let's actually do uh, this formula. So we'll get our calculators out. You can do it with me here if you want to. And we're just gonna do it like this. Patient one is uh, 88 divided by 0 0.40 divided by 32. So we'll just do it like this. You take your calculator and you're going to say 88 divided by 0.4 divided by 32. And we have a rocks index of 6.875. This is our rocks index right here for patient one. Okay, now we uh, clear this up just a little bit here. We're going to leave the 32 right there because the patient's breathing 32 times a minute. But now we have a saturation of 100%. So that's 100 divided by FiO2 is 80. And let's see what this comes out to. We've got 100 divided by 0.8 equals 125 divided by 32. 3.906. And you see what just happened here? patient with the higher saturation actually has a higher risk for failing the non-invasive treatment for hypoxemic respiratory failure uh, based off of this indicator of the ROCKS index. Now, of course, now that you, you can look at this, you can say, well, of course, they're on 80, they're on 80%. Yeah, they're on 80%. They're breathing 32 times a minute and their saturation is 100%. My point is, is that this 100% while it sometimes gives us comfort, it doesn't paint the whole picture. And so the rocks index brings more clarity. Over here, you say, oh, well, saturation is 88%. Knowing nothing else about the patient, this patient over here is probably more likely to require intubation and mechanical ventilation, but that's not the case. That's not the case at all. The rocks index tells us, being greater than 4.88, that this patient is less likely to require mechanical ventilation, intubation and mechanical ventilation than this patient over here who is below 4.88. So that's the value in the rocks index and how you can apply it and use it at the bedside. So uh, we'll wrap this up. So let's wrap this up uh, with some key points here. Remember the ROCKS index, it's an objective clinical tool, a predictive objective clinical tool. And I like objective tools because objective tools rooted in evidence and research can't be argued with. You, me and you both look at the same patient and you say, what do you think? They're gonna, you think they're gonna, think they're gonna require intubation and mechanical ventilation? And I go, nah, probably not. And you look at them and go, Oh, I think they will. See, that's subjective assessments. But this is an objective assessment that can't be argued with. No matter what we think about the likelihood of this patient subjectively, objective data rooted in research and evidence says, based off the ROCKS index, that your patient is getting better and tolerating the therapy well or is, 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 is not tolerating the therapy well and has an indicator that is likely to require intubation and mechanical ventilation. So keep that in mind. And then finally, you know what I love about these tools like this is that you don't need anybody's permission to use this. You can assess this. You can go in and assess your patient's ROCKS index. The next time you have a patient on a high flow nasal cannula, you can do this. You just have to do it. And so I like that uh, because that uh, brings value to you as a clinician and also brings value to your patient in being able to, to predict. If you could predict the future and it was heading in a bad way, you would, re, you would correct earlier. You would say, whoa, whoa, this isn't going in the right direction. I need, we need to do something different. And so by using this on your patients during their assessment periods with patients receiving high flow nasal cannula, 
that's what we have the opportunity to do is to 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 somewhat be indicated in predicting which direction we're heading here. You have the freedom to do that all on your own. Now, also it's important to get these things into your facility. It's important that you are documenting them. So you want to assess and you want to document. And then we need to discuss. And when I say discuss, I mean discuss with your fellow RTs during report. This should be, if you have a patient on a high flow nasal cannula, this ROCKS index should be included in that report. Talk about it. Discuss it. If somebody hasn't heard of the ROCKS index, talk to them about what it is and, and why it's important and why you are assessing it. Also, talk with your physicians and your, your, your multidisciplinary rounds. When you get a chance to participate in those rounds, talk to them about the ROCKS index. How's the patient doing? Respiratory, how, how, how's the patient doing? Tolerating high flow nasal cannula very well. Dot, 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 rocks index is boom. What is rock? What'd you say? Rocks index. Yeah, it's a predictive tool that can help, help us uh, determine if the patient is more or less likely to require intubation secondary to this hypoxemic respiratory failure. Check it out. Here's the data on it. The, the heads will spin and you'll be the hero. So uh, be sure to do that. Document it and discuss it. And, um, and that's the rocks index. So thank you for watching. I'm Respiratory Coach. If you're here on YouTube, stick around, hit the subscribe button, like and comment. Tell me if you're using the ROCKS Index. Tell me if you've ever heard of it. Uh, talk to me about how you're using in your facility to the rest of the community. Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, respiratorycoach.com. Hey, remember at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.